What's your story? What's your sign? It's like we're twin flames in a different life. Deep connection, lights a spark. It's like you know me in the depths of my Right, so we've just arrived at our boat. We haven't been down in a while. It says a lot, we went. We came down Was two it? weeks ago. We came down two weeks ago for a little day sail, but didn't really film anything because... Well, the situation is just every single weekend is like 40 mile an hour winds. It's been a bit rubbish. It's still um, 40 mile an hour. We're yeah. not sure we're going out today, but... We've got and to... raining, so if it's raining and windy, like, it's a no-go, isn't it? Yeah. The other exciting thing that we found last time, and I think I can't see it again today is we arrived at our berth, well, our pontoon, and our boat wasn't there, which was always a concerning thing. Yeah. But it turned out they were doing dredging work, so they've moved it. So we saw it over the other side of the uh, pontoon, so we had to walk around. It's not back, so we'll need to no. go and find it. There she is. Spider. There was a fire at the pub, which happened the day we moved here. Not guilty. Right, we are going to show you today how to cook probably one of the most essential things you could ever need on a passage um, in general life, and that's bread. Now, the beautiful thing about this recipe is it's mega simple, it's completely idiot proof. I mean, bread in general, people are scared of, and you don't need to be, because it's so simple to do, and it's super easy to, um, it has a lot of tolerance, so you can, you can get it wrong. Now, the other thing about this recipe, and most breads in general, is this one recipe, you can do pizza dough with it, you can do uh, focaccia, you can do a normal tin loaf, you can do rolls, you can do baguettes, you can do flatbreads. First things first, 500 grams of strong white bread flour. Buy the best flour you can, as with all ingredients. Now, one mug, as most people like me won't have scales uh, on their boat, should have scales. One mug, standard size mug, is the equivalent to 150 grams. So you want three of those, which is going to give us 450. And then the rest, I haven't even got enough flour. So what have I got there? 350, 400. You would normally want half a kilo, 500. I mean, it shows you how prepared I am, doesn't it? Jesus Christ. I've only got one job today, do some bread. But this will show you the tolerance. You've got lots of room to play with this. You want some yeast, so you can get packeted yeast. So I need scissors. You can get fresh yeast. Now this, or dry yeast. Now this dry yeast comes in um, a couple of, well, so you can get tins of it, you can get little packets of it, and you want about seven grams. Okay, so we want 350 ml of lukewarm water. And into there goes your yeast. And real simple, you just want to agitate that. basically get a whisk or a fork or whatever and mix it all up. So you agitate that up and then we uh, we leave that to rest for about three or four minutes. And what will happen, which we'll see when we come back, is you'll get some fermentation happen. So bubbles will come on the top of it and then you know it's activated. If that doesn't happen, then it means your yeast is dead and you need to get some new yeast, basically. Uh, and then you want about a teaspoon of salt which you can put into the yeast, but I prefer to mix it in with the flour because then there's no risk of damaging your uh, yeast because salt can actually kill the yeast. Once that's ready, that goes into there and we're ready to mix. One note 
is, before I forget to tell you, is water to flour ratio can vary because flour will retain different amounts of water. So sometimes you might need 300 ml, sometimes you might need 350. Um, and I'll show you the mix and what it should look like. So you can adjust with either extra flour or extra water, depending on uh, what your situation is in the bowl. So the final thing we have to do just before we uh, mix the two is just to... add some olive oil. But unfortunately, because <laughs> it's so cold, we're just heating the yeah. olive oil up to uh, it says, you can actually use it. it says you can actually use it. We've got some activation here, bubbles. It's starting to, all this foam here. Now, the longer you leave this, you can leave it for five or 10 minutes, but we haven't got all day today and it will be absolutely fine. Key thing I want to show you is tolerances in cooking is just huge. You've got a lot of room. Olive oil, two, three tablespoons of olive oil. And then we go in with our yeast and water mix. Now, because I've only got 450 grams in here, I'm gonna hold a little bit back and get it mixed. Now, one tool you want in your kitchen, or your galley, I should say, if you don't have one, is one of these. These spatulas are fantastic because they take away if you're cooking a stew or anything, you can really clean the pan with it. If you're doing this, as you can see, you can scrape off all the excess and it just makes things nice and neat and practical. So you wanna get it to this stage so it's all together. I actually think that's enough. And then you get your hand in. And you wanna knead it for about five to 10 minutes at least till it's all gone together. You've got no lumps and you've got a nice smooth dough. Once you've got to this, we can put it out on our work surface. And the technique, push and pull back, push and pull back. It's all very messy. Olive oil, olive oil on your hands. Okay. Rub your hands together, and coat your dough, so that makes it much more pliable to work with, much smoother, finishes it off nicely, and also you clean your hands up nice. And moisturise. And you moisturise, yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, so we are nearly there now, so I've, been, I've needed this for seven minutes or so. It's nice and smooth. So we get it into a little ball, whack it in your proving dish. Now this could be a saucepan, it could be a bowl like we've got here, glass bowl. But what you, we're now gonna wait for, we're gonna cover this with cling film, if we've got cling film. If not, then we'll cover it with a tea towel. And we're gonna leave it for about an hour in a, a warmish place to prove. And what's gonna happen over that hour is this will hopefully double in size. I've made a flapjack in the oven. Which I forgot, I wasn't recording, so. Charlie took two photos instead of pushing <laughs> record on both the videos. Did a lovely video of it. Did a really lovely video, but I'll have to show you that at another day. Delicious. It smells good. Rises are fucked up. It's fucked up. It's time then. Definitely recording now. Yes. Super, right, let's have a look. Woohoo, look at that. Excellent, there we go. Really come up. So that has at least doubled in size, which yeah. is good. So now, this next stage, what we're gonna do is knock back the dough. 500 grams really is more than enough for one loaf. So a decent sized normal loaf, which could be popped in a tin and left to rise. Uh, it could be a focaccia loaf, it could be a number of rolls so it's, it's one portion of, of bread normally but what i'm going to do today to show you the different types is um, make smaller i think miniature breads to show you what what those things look like so we're going to do a focaccia uh we're going to do some rolls we're going to do a little small loaf demonstrate and explain pizza dough or, or flatbreads super simple so what we want to do as before Get some olive oil on your hands. Turn the wooden ring off. 
get some olive oil on your hands and this just basically is a preventative measure. It will stop your, um, your hands from getting sticky. And just give that a rub. And then we want to pull the dough out of the bowl. As you can see, slap it on your work top. Get that out of the way. And then you just want to slap it around a little bit to pull it and just knock the air out of it a touch. So this you just need to do for about two or three minutes. So that's been knocked back and we've basically got what pretty much what we started with, but you'll notice with the dough, it's a lot more elastic -y now and uh, sticky, the gluten's really got to work. Then what we want to do is get portionage. So what I'm going to need to do today. So depending on what you're making, I'm going to do a focaccia in this little tray. But what we could do is just go bang like that, spread it out, and leave that to rise for the second proof, and it will turn into a loaf. But obviously, we're going to create a couple of different things for you. So I'm going to cut that into sort of half, and then we're going to shape this. So focaccia, we all know the shape of focaccia. It's a flat bread, but it's got a decent rise. So get your rough shape and into the, the tray we go. And just move all of the bread around to the sides. Flavour our focaccia. So I've just got some rosemary here. So you just want to sprinkle a few sprigs of rosemary around into the bread. This is the exciting bit of bread making is you can experiment. So at this stage now is the time when you could you could add some sun-dried tomatoes to that, you could add some cheese to that, you could add some caramelized onions, mushroom bread, whatever you would like to see in your bread is at this stage that you would add it. And you can do that with focaccia, it's very simple. So you basically put your bit more salt on there, put your rosemary in, Tamp it all out, and then the key with focaccia is you'll always see those dimples. So what you want to do is just get your fingers and dimple the bread. We're going to do this at this stage, and then we're going to do it again after the second proof before it goes in, and you'll see that. So that now will set aside, mm -hmm. and on we'll our proving table. Second. Now what we're going to do? Let's say you wanted pizza. So you would take your dough. Roll it into a ball, or a square, you can have a square pizza. If you don't have a rolling pin on your boat, then a glass bottle, a wine bottle, anything like that is perfect, and you just roll it out. Now, this can work with a, a flatbread, exactly the same principle. So we're rolling our dough out. Get it to that stage you can play with it and then just give it a stretch then at this stage you would pop that on your plate you dress it with your tomato sauce your cheese you could have garlic bread um, whatever you want to put on it um, and then that's ready to go straight into the oven that doesn't need to prove again with, with pizza dough um, we'll, we'll do that another day but just to give you that idea you, you can test it and try it Another option um, is a bread roll. So with bread rolls, what I'll do is I'll make a few little bread rolls. This is pretty self-explanatory and we'll put them together so they'll prove together. Basically, turn them all into your balls. And then what you wanna do is fold underneath. So you're folding the dough in on itself underneath. These are really going to be miniature little breads and just pop them on your baking tray. And what we'll do is we'll make a little, this could be little slider buns or... You want to give them some room because these are going to double in size again and then when they go in the oven, they're going to be even bigger than that. What we'll do with this is turn it into a, um, a baguette. So you can just roll that up. You know, 
the shape of the little mini baguette. What does that look like? <laughs> Tiny. Tiny. Okay, that will go onto our tray as well. And then with this, just a big loaf. Well, a big. We'll do a yeah, little little sort of farmhouse loaf. loaf. Again, you can fold that underneath on itself. Okay, so that would be a nice little loaf. It's going to be not, not too dissimilar to our baguette by the looks of things. Oh, that's a little bit different. And then okay. you cut and score after the second proof. Yes. Yeah. So, what we need to do now is prove that again for about 45 minutes. Okay, so exactly the same principle. Get your dough on the tray. Pop your cling film over the top of it. Perfect, and then we'll just put the tea towel, which will just help us a little bit, right? Okay, now I can't stress enough, have a play around with this, add things. So when you've got that dough rolled out, you can put some cheese in there, tomatoes, roll it up like a big Swiss roll, prove it again, it will be amazing, and you'll blow your mind at how easy this is mm. and how much better this is than shop-bought bread and you it's, can eat much more of it because it's not got all the rubbish it doesn't in it. bloat you up it's you've literally you've seen the ingredients you've got olive oil you've got a little bit of yeast you've got yeah. good flour and you've got some salt that's it there's and no you can make whole meal if you don't like yeah, you can do you know, exactly do same recipe things, can't you? whole meal bread gluten-free bread yeah. if you're gluten-free just buy gluten-free flour and switch it out this basic recipe will see you through and if you, we've yet to be on a long passage, mm. but if you're in the middle of the Atlantic, there's no better smell than no. fresh bread baking. You can literally just grab some flour, grab some bread. I'll show you flatbreads on another day as well. They're super easy. Mm. Um, but you can just grab this mix and then suddenly, you know, a few hours later, you've got your loaf. And yeah. it's very little work. It's just the proving time that takes the time. Yeah. So we'll let that prove and we'll come back and we'll cook it. Cool. Just a little spruce up. It is only the middle of January, so it's just trying to keep the green off because it mainly gets green this side because, as you can see, the sun shines from that side. So we just go a little bit green sometimes on this side of the boat, so just keep her top notch and nice and clean and sparkly. So we, it's been about, well, no, it's been about half an hour, but we've got stuff to do. So, as you can see, they have risen yet again. Now we're ready for the oven. So not a lot needed now. We've got to preheat the oven to about gas mark eight, nine, just whack it up full blast. The oven really hot and then it's going to shock the bread and that'll encourage another rise when it goes in. Mm -hmm. And then once the uh, bread goes into the oven, you can drop the oven down to gas mark five, uh, which will be about 200-ish. And then we're gonna bake, if it was a big loaf, you wanna be baking it for about 25, 30 minutes. Um, with these little ones, they'll probably take a bit less than that, really, probably about 20, 25 minutes. Um, and, uh, and yeah, they'll be done. So, what I'm gonna do is just score these. We'll leave the rolls as they are. And then with our focaccia, same thing again, get your fingers and you want to poke holes in it. And then we want to drizzle it with olive oil. Okay. Then I'm going to stick this on the middle shelf. And our focaccia will go on the bottom. Now 20 minutes, we'll give it a check. Um, one thing with these, certainly the ovens on boats, because you've got all the flame at the back, uh, you're going to end up obviously cooking one side a lot more. So probably after about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I'll, I'm going to turn the tray around just to give, make sure it's evenly, uh, not just burning on one side. 
Um, but regardless, it'll all taste good, even if you forget. Okay, ca Captain, how it's cooking? Let's see, now I've flipped them round. Right, the whole load of rubbish I said earlier about the gas marks, it doesn't correlate whatsoever. Wow, so look at those. So, all doing well. So I'm just gonna flip these upside down now, which will just help. And the focaccia is doing nicely. Yeah. So it's been in for about 20 minutes there. Um, we're gonna flip it upside down. I reckon it'll probably need about another 10, 15 minutes. So mm -hmm. full cooking time, revised 30, 35 minutes, I reckon, in this oven. Um, you'll know when it's cooked because you can bang the bottom and it sounds like a bass drum. It should be hollow. But we'll come back to that in a minute. Right. It's I time. We're ready. It's been about, what did you say, half an hour? Yeah. It smells. Yeah, oh if my only God. you had smell a vision no. because you just. The can't. smell on this boat is not like a normal boat. Not. Bass drum. Yeah. So what you want to do now, the mistake everybody makes, is cutting straight into these. You want to leave it to cool. You can have warm bread, it's fine, but the quicker that you open it, because it's still now, it's got residual heat, so it's still going to cook. And there we have it. A few mm. different breads. Okay, so now the all-important taste test. Yeah. Just going for a roll. Yeah. Oh, listen to this. Look at that. Look at that. Can't get better than that in a shop. No. Get my butter. You can't use a whole slab. Well, that's ridiculous. Amongst pieces, over there. Okay. Perfect. Mm. Thumbs up. Mm. Really, really good. Really. There we go. Really good. Just slice some more butter on.